Okay. For our current issues presentation, we got unconscious bias. I'm Abby Bean. And I'm Natalie Minetto. So the first bias is affinity bias, and this is the tendency people have to connect with others who share similar interests, experiences, and backgrounds. This occurs when a company is looking for someone to fit the culture of the company. A lot of the time, companies will hire people that they think will be comfortable and blend in nicely in their environment. And a way to avoid this is to take note of the similarities you share and try to put those aside when you're in the middle of the hiring process. What could be a downside? Uh, these are, I'm assuming that this isn't something we do purposefully. No, most of the time it's, um, well, it's unconscious bias, so you're not really aware that you're doing it. Okay. Um, and a negative effect that this could have is it's not allowing for the company to be diverse um, mm -hmm. because of the similarities you share. You're kind of trying to find someone to fit the mold. So you may have a very a more narrower point of view as opposed to a richer point of view by bringing in this diversity. Exactly. Good. So the next bias is confirmation bias, and this is the inclination to draw conclusions about a situation or a person based on your own personal desires, beliefs, and prejudice, and it's that on unbiased merit. Um, you know, this comes from just anyone's background, their experiences, and that creates beliefs and things that will draw you to this bias, a way to Avoid this is during an interview, ask standardized questions so that everyone has a fair chance. You know, you don't want to ask questions that go out of the way to make someone stand out to create this bias. So asking standardized questions that you will ask all participants in the interview um, will limit the confirmation bias. So attribution bias is a phenomenon where you try to make sense or judge a person's behavior based on prior observation. And of them or someone like them? Um, most of the time it's them. So if during an, an, an interview, um, okay. when the hiring team sees something unusual on a resume and assumes it will affect a candidate, that's mostly when it occurs. Okay. Or um, if in the workplace something traumatic happens to a coworker, a lot of the times the other um, coworkers will think that it's going to affect them in the workplace. Um, so a way to avoid this is to simply ask the candidate to explain whatever it is that you think is unusual and what their thoughts are on it, rather than just assuming that. Um, it's going to affect them, see what their views are on how it actually affects them. Okay. Um, conformity bias is the tendency people have to act similarly to others around them, regardless of their own personal beliefs. And it has to do a lot with peer pressure. Um, so an example of this would be if you were asked a question and everyone was to say A, but you know the answer was B, um, you would still go with the group A because you didn't want to stand out and it has to do with peer pressure, like I said. So, so we, to, like to, we like to feel similar to others. We want to fit in. Correct. We don't want to stand out. Yeah. Okay. Um, a way to avoid this is by submitting answers unanimously, um, just so that you don't have people saying their answers out loud to where this could happen. If everything was submitted by a piece of paper and then one person looks over all the answers, you would have a wide range of answers of what people truly believe. Sorry. <laughs> um, so the halo effect is the tendency people have to place another person on a pedestal after learning something impressive about them. 
Um, mm -hmm. So this happens when you see something very impressive in a candidate, such as um, a person going to an Ivy League school or having a really nice job title prior to the interview. And mm -hmm. so a way to avoid this is to look at the rest of the candidate outside from the one thing that stands out about them and see how they compare to the rest of the candidates without their one main um, attribute in the resume. So we continue to think people of being good, if they do good stuff, we can assume they continue to do good stuff and they're good people. Exactly. Ah, okay. So like the halo effect, the horn effect is when you view another person, but in the horn effect, you view them negatively. And it's normally after learning something unpleasant or negative about them, you tend to get this bias. Um, a way to avoid this is you want to figure out the situation before you make assumptions. Um, people go through all different things, and you don't really know exactly the background behind it. So you want to figure out the background before you do view them um, negatively if you I have something unpleasant or negative about them, you want to just ask them about it, and you don't want to make assumptions. Okay, so the contrast effect is the comparison between two or more things that you have come in contact with, causing you to exaggerate the performance of one in contrast to the other. So this occurs when the hiring or the hiring team compares one applicant to the next. The applications could be completely different, but that doesn't make one better than the other. Um, so ways to avoid this: use one form of application in interviews, so each applicant is viewed in the same light, rather than trying to compare apples to oranges. So ageism is the tendency to have negative feelings about another person based on their age. Um, I mean, th there's a lot of different ways to avoid this. One is having company policies um, to avoid this, or even having blind screenings when you have um, applications to a job position that's open, uh, avoiding the ability for you to see what their age is and just look at their skills particularly. So this could really go both ways. You could think I'm an old man who don't know nothing and haven't progressed. And I could look at you and say, you're too young. You don't have any experiences. So I may, it could go both ways. It's not just about old, uh, younger to older, it's older to younger. Right, and I feel like nowadays with the technology increasing, you do tend to fade away from the older generations and you do look at the new generations coming in and I feel like that's a big part of where ageism comes in because when you're hiring you don't think an old person can do the job performance with the new technology because they don't know much. Why do you make that assumption? Because my mom. <laughs> <laughs> okay, your mom. <laughs> but, but is that being a general state? I mean, are you taking an inference based on your experience with your mom of and applying it to everybody that's old. Yeah, and I feel like that's what a lot of people do. Okay. And then I think, uh, yeah, no, that makes sense. I mean, this is, I, I, none of this is, I think you started out with, it's implicit. We don't like make a conscious decision to do that. We have a set of experiences that lead us to do this. Right. Yeah, I will tell you, just you know, when, now we're off track, just a second. We can go off track a second. Um, and I think technology and the use of technology is absolutely critical. And the more I know, I learn about technology, the more I realize I don't know. But I still find students who are technology deficient, that don't know how to use technology, period. They may know how to use a phone or something, but when it comes to using Excel, PowerPoint, all this stuff, they're clueless. I'm sure that's not you ladies, not at all. <laughs> but, but no, I've seen that and I just like, you're supposed to. So I, may, I guess I did use that. I made an assumption 
that if you're younger, you have high technology, you have a, a high level of technology skills. And I guess that assumption um, isn't always valid, is it? Yeah. So I could do the same thing. Huh. Okay. Never thought about that. So next is name bias, and this is the tendency people have to judge and prefer people with certain types of names that are of Ang Angelo origin. Um, so studies actually showed that white names were called back 50% more than other names after interviews or application submissions. Um, so ways to avoid this is omit the name or email or anything giving a hint as to what ethnicity the name is and focus on the content of the application. Um, and then after you review the content, then view the name, not that it should matter, but the actual substance of the application or interview should be worth more than just the name. Fascinating. Uh, gender bias is the tendency to prefer one gender over another gender. Um, this can come in any form where males prefer to work with males, women prefer to work with women, while you have others that don't really care about the gender. Uh, a way to avoid this is when you are reviewing applications, just have blind screenings, just like I said with ageism. It works the same with gender. Mm -hmm. um, you don't look at the candidate's gender, you just look at their set of skills, their background, things like that. That comes back, we hire people that are like us. Go ahead. Okay. Um, so beauty bias, a social behavior where people believe that attractive people are more qualified, successful, and competent. Um, so studies have shown that attractive people actually earn higher incomes than less attractive people. So ways to avoid this is hold either an over-the-phone interview screening prior to a person or an in-person interview or any other type of interview where you're not looking at the person so that beauty bias doesn't come into um, or doesn't become a factor in the decision process. Um, because honestly, that shouldn't really matter in the workplace, but it is an unconscious bias that people have. Mm -hmm. Height bias is the tendency to judge a person who is significantly shorter or taller than the socially accepted human height. Um, so if someone is way below average, you look at them differently versus if someone is way above the height, like a basketball player for height. Um, you look at them differently in the workplace. A uh, hmm. way to avoid this is, like Natalie said, you can do blind screenings um, for, interv or for interviews like uh, phone or video calls, things like that, just so you aren't aware of a person's height and you just truly see them for their skills. So is unconscious bias real? Yes, in many ways it still is. Um, many women are still victims of unconscious bias in the workplace. Um, it's mostly apparent through um, when you look at the wage gap between men and women, um, that is still an issue. And then also age bias is also very apparent. It's mostly towards older people, but now we're seeing that the younger generation is finding it a little bit harder to find jobs because um, they're looked at as inexperienced and um, un not uneducated, but I guess just not as experienced having those the background in whatever um, field they're going in, rather than somebody who is a little bit older who has experience in that. Do you think, and I, 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 I stop for a moment and think about, as you're saying this, is we've been looking at, from my perspective, 
uh, women and equality has been something that's been talked about for over 40 years, but yet we still have this gap in executive positions and the gap in wages. Why, why do you think that happens? Is, is that simply because of this unconscious bias? Um, I think it definitely could be. I think like a lot of the reason is the the people who are already in charge are men and obviously nobody wants to give up their position to anyone and but i think the people who are experiencing that the most is women like for example if a ceo were to leave a company they'd be i guess more comfortable leaving it to hmm. a man um that's been with the company rather than you know a woman who's been with the company um mm -hmm. and i think for me my experience with this type of stuff is in the power sports business so that's like heavily um m run by men so to see like women executives at large um business meetings that's kind of rare um so I guess that's my views on it. Interesting. Okay. So unconscious bias does have a great effect on a company. It limits the diversity within the workplace. It creates a more exclusive environment where you do want inclusive to where everyone can work together, but it also limits the ability to recruit unique and excellent members to a team. So. You don't have people who have exceptional, exceptional abilities because you do want everyone to be able to work together, which does create the exclusive environment. Um, so that's just how it kind of affects the company in a whole. Okay. Okay, so our experience, um, I did an, inter er, an internship over the summer, and not that I really experienced ageism um, too harshly, but it was, I was looked at as, you know, the youngest person in the office. I wasn't given much responsibility, which I didn't expect to be given much responsibility, um, but there were certain things where they would just ask me to do like copying or scanning or something like that while other interns were able to do hands-on work with the associates in the office um, because they had a couple more, um, they were two years older than me. Um, so like while internships are very important when entering the working world, they can also be very hard to obtain like many companies don't value their interns because of the lack of experience that comes with young age, but it's also we have to start somewhere, like we need to gain experience. Um, so oftentimes younger people in the working place are given the less important jobs, which can make them feel undervalued. Okay. And for my experience, you know, going through high school and college, you see a lot of conformity bias just because you don't want to stick out in that new environment and you want to fit in with everyone. Um, so you know, when the professor asks you who thinks it's A, who thinks it's B, uh -huh. if the majority of people are saying A, you're going to raise your hand because you do not want to stick out and be that one person that raises their hand for D. Interesting. Okay. So at some point, everybody can be affected by unconscious bias, whether it's in school, after graduation, or even in the workplace. Um, limited diversity will hinder a company's innovation and creativity while also making, making it more difficult to advance within our career. So if everyone is equally the same, uh, no one has, sticks out just because everyone's trying to fit in, um, you will find it hard to advance because you know everyone's the same, so you don't have that uh, ability or skill that sticks out making you um, have a better chance to be promoted or something like that. Hmm. Interesting. 
And this was just our work cited for our article that we had. Yep, so all of the information came from this article and our prior experience. Um, what did you learn about yourselves from doing this? Um, I learned that I probably do have some unconscious bias as far as specifically which ones. I'm not sure. Um, I think the one that I would align with the most is conformity bias. Because mm -hmm. I, I do tend to do that. I try to stay with the groups rather than, you know, be different. Mm -hmm. I definitely agree with you. I think I'm in the conformity bias. Um, there are actually quizzes that you can take online to see where you fit in and what kind of biases you have, which I thought were really cool. Oh, could you send me that? Yeah, I can. Uh, I think that, that's really good. Um, but I think in I, I, what I learned from what you just said with the com, um, conformity is that maybe in class when we do real world things, I have to encourage people to think and not always agree. Yeah, I think that would be really helpful in order to try and eliminate some of that bias for yeah. the future. Because, okay. you know, students are in a more comfortable environment. They feel um, encouraged to speak their mind and mm -hmm. have their own thoughts rather than just kind of align with whatever somebody else is saying. And if, if so the more I think if I'm trying to interpret some of this is that if I become more aware of these biases, I can deal with them in a positive manner. Yes. Yeah. Because I know I, I, I know it, it's there and I got to do something consciously different to make this a success for the for the world as it is today. Yeah, exactly. I mean, most obviously, you know, like most of the time people don't realize that they have these biases, which is why they're called unconscious biases. So by being aware of them, you're able to kind of control them and, you know, not let it hinder whatever it is that they pertain to. Okay. I, this was very good. I, I think you guys did a fantastic job. Uh, I commend you on that. And uh, hopefully we can get more students in the class to, to watch this one and really become aware. Uh, I think we need to all do that. So thank you very, very much. Thank you. Thank you.